Okay, live from the port trail here. Uh, we're going to take a look and AB run a comparison of the Hoka One One Rincon 3 and compare it to the two here. We have our full multi tester review up in written form and we also have a video review of the Rincon 3. But I hadn't run the two, only the one, so Hoka was kind enough to send me a pair of Rincon 2s, which I'm going to closely compare on the run in an A-B test during this video. So let's talk a bit about kind of the more obvious changes. Uh, first, uh, one thing doesn't change. They still are $115 each. This is Hoka's up-tempo light uh, exciting little shoe same stack height as before 29 24 so the same as the Clifton but with a slightly different midsole foam one of the knocks on the one and two was the midsole foam didn't last very long the durability wasn't great and also that the outsoles didn't last as long as people liked well there have been changes in both areas as you can see we now have much more outsole coverage in the forefoot in comparison to the two. We also have a new foam uh, that's supposed to be somewhat more durable. To pressing, it feels just a touch softer than the Rincon um, 2. And from memory, I do think it's softer than the 1. Also of significance, check out the midsole sidewalls here. You can see very little sculpting, very little sculpting. Whereas over here on our three, we have deeper grooves. Um, the Rincon three is definitely more flexible uh, than I recall the one. Right now, these are brand new, fresh out of the box. So during, after the run, I'll see how flexible they get. But it's clear, um, as with most of the uh, uh, Rincons, uh, most of the Hokas this year, that there's a new rocker geometry, which also has flex. We've seen that in the Mach 4 in in the um, uh, Zinal, uh, in, in the Arahi to a certain extent, and a bit less in the Clifton 8. Um, so we're, I'm looking forward to seeing how that pans out on the run. Now, um, in terms of the uppers, uh, Hoka says there's a bit more room, if you will, and I can sort of see it right in here compared to our Rincon 2. The mesh is similar, although this feels a bit more like mesh, and this has a smoother kind of feel to it. Um, there are significant changes to the tongue. So let's take a look at the tongues. There is our three, and there is our Rincon 2, which is a more kind of padded tongue, whereas here, this is a flatter tongue. It works, this flat tongue works just great. Um, uh, it, I, I could, the only comment I'd make about it is it could be a touch longer. I say that in the other review um, the, on the channel here. Now, we're also looking at the heel here. We have a bit of the swallowtail that we're seeing in more and more hokas. So what that does is provides kind of a levered landing contributes it to being, I think, softer than the Rincon 1. We'll see compared to the 2 here. Also, check out the geometry. We talked about the midsole sidewalls, but I definitely see a more pronounced uh, heel uh, a bevel, a little longer in through here. Maybe just an illusion, but uh, also maybe a bit more through the front. And remember, it flexes whereas um, the Rincon 1 didn't flex nearly as much. We'll see how this 2 flexes. So this uh, geometry kind of blends the um, rocker with some flexibility. That's something I really, really like. Now, all the changes put together in terms of weight, what do they lead to? Well, um, I, this is a men's 8.5, and, uh, and in good news, uh, the three weighs 199 grams, 7.02 ounces, whereas the two weighs 7.27 uh, ounce, uh, ounces or 206 grams. So we lose seven grams, which is always welcome. I think a lot of that may come from the different tongues. But Hoka also said that even with this more extensive outsole, and remember outsole 
is is uh, rubber is a, is kind of the heaviest material you can put in a shoe. We have more rubber here at the heel. Uh, fairly similar, um, but we do add a piece here that we don't have over here. Um, that uh, they did a lot of work with the geometry underfoot. And another thing I definitely notice, you'll notice these longitudinal grooves. Um, the cavity is a bit wider, not quite as deep. But over here, we have kind of a more interrupted pattern. This, to me, makes the shoe smooth, very smooth, very smooth flowing. Whereas I always struggled a bit uh, with the stiffness and also the lack of decoupling. Although many just love the, the Rincon too. So now I'm going to take them out for a AB run as I like to do. And uh, tell you how it all goes uh, after I get back. Stay tuned. So I took a, long, a run along the coast along my usual haunts at a moderately slow pace as I ran pretty hard yesterday. So here's what I found. Let's talk about fit. Well, the Rincon 2 is clearly snugger through here than our uh, 3. It also has a narrower toe box by a little bit. It does have a little more secure heel hold. Not quite as comfortable, though, as the um, 3 in that department. This is clearly in the 3 a broader fit. Uh, the right foot is my narrower one my left over here is wider and uh, I am pretty snug in, in this new pair of twos and my wide foot is just very comfortable almost roomy in this uh, three that I've run three or four times so if you um, have a, a very narrow foot you may struggle in the three if you are on the edge of needing a wide in the uh, two you definitely should try regular in the three. Uh, and I can't imagine uh, the, the threes wide should be super wide. So those that couldn't even get in to the two should be happy. In terms of the upper mesh, I noticed the three is a little more breathable. No question, it doesn't have that lining. The tongue is a bit more comfortable. Uh, they both stayed nicely laced up. So there's quite a difference in fit here. Um, and uh, so I'm going to keep keep going and I'm going to tell you about the ride because there's some interesting things there. So stay tuned. So I made it back just in time for the thunderstorm to hit. So let's talk a little bit about the differences in ride. So our Rincon 3 has definitely softer foam with a bit more bounce than our Rincon 1. There's no question. It also has the geometry is more pronounced with more flex. We do now have some flex in our Rincon 3. However, I think because our midsole to outsole interface is more linear here, you can see how it's interrupted, with more rubber coverage, you get a smoother flow forward. With the Rincon 2, I had more of the traditional Hoka, you kind of got to lift and kind of pop up. Um, I also felt a little bit of ache across here uh, in the Rincon uh, 2. Um, not sure if that's the stiffness or the firmness. Uh, the two that does have a bit more, if you will, uh, responsive pop or snap because it is firmer, it seems. And also you've got to kind of drive your knees up. While here with our Rincon uh, 3, we kind of roll more gently. Um, so uh, this is the 3, uh, leans a little bit more training ride, for me anyway, than the Rincon 2. And also because of the width. Uh, and I'm not fussy about width, but this is definitely narrower through here. It loosened up a bit than our Rincon 3. And also, I think there's more room in the toe box. So um, with the rear hold here a bit cruder, but a little touch uh, kind of higher and more secure. So if you have a very narrow foot, you're going to be you're going to probably be very happiest here. If you have a slightly wider foot, as I showed in the, the fit section, uh, you're going to be happier here and there's also the wide available so more training focused if you will a slightly more gentle ride I think the um, uh, swallow tail a bit more extended in our Rincon uh, 3 now let me move them around uh, gives you a little bit more cushion um, but both of them uh, are still Rincons both of them have a really light snappy ride we have a full multi-tester review over on road trail run 
uh, and also another video review earlier of the Rincon 3. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, we hope you'll subscribe to our channel and please go over to roadtrailrun.com for hundreds of detailed uh, multi-tester reviews of running shoes and gear.